So, ladies and gentlemen, Venus is in the sign of Leo currently, and very soon he is about to enter Virgo, the sign of debilitation, the exaltation sign of Mercury, and the sign ruler, which is Mercury, is now in retrogression. Mm -hmm. I know Mercury is retrograde, and so many things are happening here. Too much to do, but yet not able to get through it <laughs> all right so let's discuss a bit on this uh, venus transit into the sign of virgo and as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me then please go to my website down in the description section below and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him irrespective of whoever is retrograde so now what's this retrograde this is a very uh, special kind of, uh, sorry, not retrograde, the debility. And this debility is very special. Why? Because oh, this video is becoming blurry. Let me check. All right, there you go. Why, why do I say this? Because um, there's a Parivartan Yoga which is occurring, which means Mercury is in the sign of Venus. And Venus is in the sign of Mercury. This can also happen if... Mercury was in Taurus and Venus was in Gemini. Okay, so this is an exchange when a planet is sitting in, uh, when two planets are sitting in each other's houses. That's known as Parivartan Yoga. And as per Parashara, this is the strongest form of yoga. This yoga is even more powerful compared to a conjunction. So therefore, you have to understand how this yoga will manifest. Now, every year Venus goes uh, into debility once, but Many times it can happen that Mercury is also there, uh, so then Venus gets Nich Panga. Uh, but now um, it's not getting Nich Panga, it's getting Parivartana. Okay? So, which means it is like saying, not literally, but it is like saying that Venus will behave as if he's in Libra and Mercury will behave as if uh, he is in the sign of Virgo. So, that's, this is like a very uh, tricky situation because. In Parivartan, what is happening now? Uh, in case of Taurus and Gemini, it's not so extreme, okay? Because Taurus is not the debilitation sign of Mercury, neither is Gemini the debilitation of Venus, okay? But here, it's very different because one sign, Libra, is the moon tricone sign of Venus. And Mercury has exaltation in Virgo and Venus has debilitation in Virgo, okay? Therefore, this is a very interesting transit. So, how do you see Parivartan Yoga basically? Parivartan Yoga basically means that you know, there, there are millions of interpretations to this yoga and what happens ultimately will depend on your horoscope. But if you want to understand what Parivartan Yoga is, it's like saying, it's like, a, uh, it's, have you heard of that proverb, make the best use of a bad, bad bargain. It's like that. So sometimes what happens is, uh, depending on your ascendant, now, this Parivartan Yoga may be beneficial for you, it may be harmful for you, okay? So, uh, for example, if this Parivartan Yoga is happening in your 6th and 7th house, okay? So, um, for example, if you are a Aries Lagna, okay, then this will happen in your 6th and 7th. Now, this can be a bit of challenge for married life, okay? Or if it's happening in your 5th and 6th axis, then it could uh, have some benefits and some challenges can come along with it. Or it could mean that you are able to cross through the uh, benef uh, the challenges which can come through these benefits, okay, because of the fifth house, okay. So therefore, you must judge this yoga from the ascendant. And Parivartan Yoga means that to function properly related to one particular house, you need the help of the other house also. This is like saying Mercury and Venus, they need each other. Okay? This is very different from a conjunction. Conjunction is not like, conjunction can sometimes have uh, Graha Yudas also, which means two planets can fight if they are in very close proximity, degree wise. Okay? But this is totally different because uh, in this case, what could happen is that the planets might feel that, okay, I need you, you need me. So, the word for this yoga is actually interdependence, okay? So this is a very good time for us to learn what is interdependence. So if you see the Vedic culture, 
Uh, Vedic culture is a culture of interdependence. It is not dependence. There are three levels. One is dependence. The other one is independence. Okay. And the third level is interdependence. Dependence is the first level where you are basically dependent on somebody. You, know, you are weak. You are you are you are not able to do things yourself. Okay? You need help of somebody else. So interdependence is in tamoguna basically. Okay, it's in the mode of ignorance. It's third class, low grade. Um, that gives you suffering. That gives you misery. Okay, and then you have independence. What is independence? Independence means I am able to do things myself. Okay. I can do all the things myself. I don't need anybody. That's the uh, idea in Kali Yuga. You know, independence, independence, independence. You know, everybody wants independence these days. They want to be independent. right? So this, this, this independence is in uh, Rajoguna. Rajoguna means mode of passion. It's a bit better in, in a sense that you are not able to, you don't need to depend on others, but you are independent. Okay? You can do things yourself, you can make the ends meet. Now, the problem with this idea of independence is that you're still alone. You're just lonely, even if you're not lonely, but the heart is not satisfied. That is why uh, people in Kali Yuga, they have broken from families and they have gone to you know, nuclear families, but their hearts are unhappy. Their faces are smiling, their hearts are lonely and miserable. Why? Even I see in the Western countries, especially staying five years in a place like Germany, I always see this, that um, two neighbors never talk to each other. You rarely find them talking. Even then you need to uh, take appointments and be very formal. Now, I'm not saying that it's bad to take appointments. What I'm trying to tell you is that the modern uh, hedonistic uh, Kaliuga says that you know be independent the only way to be happy and successful in life is to be independent you know unless you are independent you can never be happy these are the things which you will see flooded over in youtube and instagram of course but vedic culture is beyond the dependence and independence Vedic culture takes you to the next level, which is interdependence. Okay. Interdependence means I am a fulfilled, happy individual. I can do everything myself. And you are also like that. You are a happy individual, fulfilled, full in yourself. You don't need me. I don't need you. But still, I will take care of some part of your life and you take care of some part of my life. Okay. So by that, what happens? There is sharing, there is interaction, there is harmony, there is love, there is, you know, attraction, not that uh, physical sexual attraction, but any kind of attraction in this world. There, there is no possibility of expressing love without interdependence. And that is what the Vedic culture teaches us. You know, that there is there's this culture of interdependence. Like uh, in Vedic culture, sometimes uh, people are felt uh, like sometimes, you know, like when once I was in uh, my ashram days in 2013, I guess, you know. <laughs> so then my Shiksha Guru had once told me that because I was busy with this MTech gate preparation. So then my Shiksha Guru told me that uh, we are really missing you. You are really needed here. <laughs> uh, of course, I was staying in the ashram, but I was not contributing much you know but the thing is if you see in a literal sense there was no need for me to be there or there was no uh, such amazing contribution which i could have done that was not there but he he had made me feel needed actually okay so that's something i can remember that's a part of vedic culture okay like sometimes in weddings, people say, you know, just before the wedding, you know, oh, if you are not there, if suppose one person is very close to you, you know, if you are not, how can we think of, how can I think of my wedding apart from you, without you, you know, it's not possible. Okay? So now you can say, oh, we can have functions, ceremonies, but only one person stays there and that's myself, right? So therefore, this transit can give you this uh, opportunity to, Understand that um, just being headless like animals and being boasting about your independence doesn't make you happy. The only thing that makes the soul happy is interdependence because interdependence is the only place where you can express love. Okay? You can get love, you can give love. Okay? 
and uh, as the vedanta sutra says ananda mayo bhyasat raso vaisaha the um, ananda mayo bhyasat means the um, eternal pleasure okay the soul is accustomed to pleasure and pleasure only comes from love when you give love when you receive love okay so therefore you, you may feel that oh my god venus is in debility love life will be ruined or something like this. well don't worry nothing of that sort will happen this is a very good time to see the houses which venus rules and the houses which mercury rules and because of libra there is some kind of a compromise okay and as i said in my mercury retrograde video the best compromise or best negotiation is where both the parties leave with some dissatisfaction that's the best level of compromise that you can make so make the necessary compromise but understand that there's a higher purpose to life there's a higher goal and i cannot be happy if i'm just alone now when i say alone i don't mean you have to be with a partner or you have to get married you should have a spouse no i'm not saying all this you might be a celibate you might be a monk but even then you you sh it's better you stay in the monastery with other monks all right where you can express and experience interdependence okay so there are two ways one is the brahmachari ashram the other one is the grihastha ashram okay so in grihastha ashram there is the concept of interdependence okay so where uh, both the uh, the man and the woman they certain areas of their life they are dependent on each other apparently okay but that's not dependence actually that's interdependence okay and the child is also dependent in the beginning but then later on it moves towards independence and then interdependence later on okay so therefore uh, check your chart where mercury uh, which house is mercury rules and which house is venus rules so what kind of in the interdependence that will be and what will be the flavors that will really depend on your horoscope and primarily the effects will manifest through the dashas okay so do not ignore the dashas don't take them lightly and check other transits all right so by that you can realize so for example mercury is your fifth lord you know, then you might realize the need of interdependence with your child okay if seventh lord then with your spouse right so that's how you see all right so therefore i would uh, request anybody watching this video that uh, the way kaliuga is destroying people is by giving fake uh, sense of independence i always keep seeing this lonely miserable independent people <laughs> so don't be independent don't be dependent either come to the platform of interdependence okay and now i am very sure there are less than maybe 1% of the people who will be able to understand what i am saying and most of the people watching this video they will get angry they will say oh what nonsense you are speaking you are saying to be dependent no you are independent you will be <laughs> so as i expect uh, to see in the comments all right but anyways that was my job to tell you and then either you like it or you not that's none of my business and that's your free will right thank you very much for your time and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me please go visit my website down below god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him